from different stages. You have tamas, you have rajas, you have sattva. Could you explain what you mean by that? For the last thousand years, our society can be described as tamasic. No energy, no activity, except eating, drinking, and personality, personal, that's all. So that tamasic state, we passed through. Then came the dhakka, I recall the push from the West culture. That gave us a new awakening. It could have destroyed us, but something in India keeps it alive. That is the Upanishad. India owes this continuity of culture through, through the Upanishads. In no part of the world you will find a literature like the Upanishads. Study of man in depth. So what happened? This Western push could have destroyed many cultures. We were also getting out of control in the 19th century. But Upanishads acted once again on our mind and we started judges. First stage is rajas. There is no place from tamas to sattva. First you must pass through rajas. And now for the last 50 years of independence, we are passing through tremendous rajas. So sleeping sections of people are awake. They struggle. They want a place under the sun. They are not going to sit quiet. So you find conflict. Social conflict is bound to happen when a tamasic society tries to become awakened. That is what is happening in India today. Sections after sections were lying low. They have been exploited for centuries. They are getting a place. And we have got a, our own place in our society. So they struggle. This struggle will go on. And for 50 years more, this kind of struggle, and then slowly a stability will come. Yes, I have a status. You have a status. Nobody is below. So then will come the real growth of India. This is also growth. It's necessary for that other growth. But a real India will come another 50 years later when every system, every section of society gets its own place in a democracy like ours. We have preserved our democracy in spite of many weaknesses, what you call, but to refer to India's democracy as a, a faltering democracy. We are a faltering democracy, but it is still democracy. Therefore, if we can continue like this, some time will come, people have got their status, every group, every untouchable, lower level, Dalit, all these things, all will come up. Then will come the real growth of India. And then our impact upon the rest of the world will be tremendous. Generally, when a nation expands, just like Greece, when they united all the states and became Grecian state by Alexander's father, it expanded. How? Military. All Western expansion, even Chinese expansion, has been military primarily. But India's expansion has been ideological. Our ideas spread all over the world. Throughout the ages, that is what happened, say, 4th century, Plato, Aristotle, and Plato and Socrates. One British writer has written a book, The Message of Plato, and he says that you can't understand Plato and Socrates without understanding the Upanishads. Upanishads influenced tremendously when Socrates is drinking poison, one scene is described there. Crito, one of his friends, says, Socrates, how shall we bury you? Socrates smiled. He said, you want to bury me? You mean the body? After the body, do with it as you do with other people. I am not the body. That is teaching about Upanishads said, I am the Atman, and the pure self, birthless, deathless, that is the Atman. That knowledge is never found in Greek. That's why he had to die. <laughs> he learned something beyond Greek political thinking. So he had to die. Suppose he was in India. He would have been honored. He would have been worshipped. Same thing in Jesus. Such a great soul. He had to die. Why? Right? They couldn't digest this higher spiritual thought. In India, nobody dies. Vivekananda, in the modern period, criticized the Hindu religion. Our social practices more virulently than any foreign missionary. But if we have honored him, worshipped him, that is India. The spiritual aspect, we know how to recognize, how to really appreciate and also try to follow as much as we can. That is one thing that has to be kept in view. India has passed through so many stages, sometimes very low. Then some great teacher comes, Buddha comes, a Sankaracharya comes like that, a new awakening comes. This happened in the modern period. They were on the brink of disaster, but out of that they have grown stronger, still stronger than what we were before. We began their predicted. Modern India will develop in such a way far superior to what it has done earlier ages. 
that is going to be worldwide influence as well. Well, wouldn't you?